everybody. It's Mike Sullivan with Born to Shine. Today, we have an awesome guest. His name is Dr. Ryan, and he is the superintendent over at North Valley Military Prep in Sun Valley, California. And thank you, Dr. Ryan, for making some time with us today. really appreciate you being here. My pleasure. Please call me Mark. Mark. Okay, cool, Mark. Well, thanks for being with us. And, you know, um, what What are... I actually personally and our guests who are admin like you um, and teachers and parents of students K through 12, we'd all love to hear your journey to becoming the superintendent because that's a really big responsibility. You've got a lot of kiddos uh, looking up to you and staff. So um, we'd love to hear what it was like um, for you and your journey to become that. Well, I grew up in, in South Los Angeles and uh, eventually, part of my journey was being a, a cadet in middle school and high school, and eventually went uh, to work with the California National Guard uh, and was involved in youth programs for the California National Guard and um, got my college degree and was a school teacher and did part time work with the uh, youth programs for the California Guard. and. Um, eventually became a school principal and uh, started out actually in the Catholic school system and then went to the public school system. And uh, in 2005, I guess, 2006, uh, got a phone call from then uh, uh, former Governor Jerry Brown here in California, uh, who was had started a military academy in Oakland and mm -hmm. asked me to help with that, that endeavor. And so I spent eight years working with him uh, on that endeavor. And part of his goal was to see the, the concept of public military schools expanded in the state. And so he worked with me to get one going here in Los Angeles. And we are now in our 10th year and I've been here uh, this I'm I'm going into my tenth year also. Oh wow, that's amazing! That's really cool. So you've seen a lot of change, a lot of growth over those ten years, I would imagine. And yeah, that's that's pretty special. We we started out with about eighty students, and we're now at uh, just slightly more than eight hundred. So uh, oh wow, this yeah. is definitely a model that's appealing to to a lot of families. That's incredible. That's amazing. And, you know, when you, Mark, when you were a kiddo, anywhere between K and 12, were there anything or any issues that maybe internally um, that you may have uh, struggled with or were challenged with? Like for me, it was OCD and ADD, uh, some anxiety and depression. I had A through Z. I was a mess. And so, um, but our, our listeners would love to hear maybe anything that you went through and maybe who helped you or, you know, how you got through that. So I, I don't know how familiar all of your listeners are to with uh, adverse childhood experiences uh, study and surveys, but um, I actually experienced nine of the ten mm. as a as a youngster. Uh, when I was about eight years old, my father attempted to kill my mother uh, in mm. front of me, and mm. I uh, witnessed that and ended up calling the police and, and, and testifying against him. And uh, that was just one of a great many uh, traumas that, that I had as a youngster. And um, I, uh, I think that a big part of why I do what I do now is a direct result of the fact that I know what those adverse childhood experiences were like. I know how they impacted my ability to learn. Um, different people respond to those those aces in different ways. Uh, I did. I my response was to try to become a perfectionist, mm -hmm. which actually had all of its negative implications as a result of of trying to become a perfectionist. Um, but part of the reason why I was involved in creating schools like this is that, um, you know, I'm trying to serve students who suffer from ACEs at rates dramatically higher than the national average. Wow, uh, Mark, that's that's awesome, man. What you're doing, and first of all, what you went through, man, I, I can't even imagine. I'm so sorry. But the coolest part is you're taking that 
and you're turning it into something good to help other kids that are going through all kinds of struggles and whatever it is, but that's really fueling you and, and firing you up to help all these other kids to, um, to, to, to get through whatever it is they're going through, right. And to be the best version of themselves. So that's just way to go, man. That's really, really cool of you. Um, well, and I think it's worth commenting that, you know, we, we, as a staff here ha have created a mantra that sort of guides our work and it has three parts to it. And the first of those parts is, you know, to nurture every child as our own, you know, these are young people that deserve the very best po possible education and that and i and i've listened to a bunch of your podcasts i know that everybody says the same basic premise right kids don't care what you know till they know that you care mm -hmm. they they need adults that genuinely love them both as human beings and as learners and want them to succeed as human beings and as learners. And so the belief is that we want every child to truly feel loved and valued and appreciated and respected. And so that nurture is the first part of our mantra. The second part of our mantra is transform their scars into stars. So we have a, a our motto is uh, per ardua ad astra, through adversity to the stars. Mm. And all of these are kids who have significant emotional and in some cases physical scars from the trauma that they've experienced. And so our second part of our mantra is transform those scars into stars, that there is adversity and we can't undo the adversity, but we absolutely can help um, the that scarring is a is a sign of resilience, but also then to be able to say, okay, let's use this as a means, a mechanism to overcome and and to 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 turn that into something amazing. And then the third part of our mantra is to embrace the power of yet. You know, for us, that word yet is really important. So. Uh, I can't do this algebra problem yet. Uh, I am not able to shoot the free throw successfully yet. Uh, I am not ready for this particular college course yet. But that yet is a really important word. And that's a big part of, of I think, my philosophy and what, what our school philosophy is to help with young people who often have convinced themselves or others have convinced them that, that something will never happen. And we're trying to say, nope, it's just not happening yet. Absolutely love that, Mark. That's incredible. Nurturing each kid, uh, to, for a recap, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, nurturing every student as if they were your own child. Number two, turning and transforming their scars into stars. And the third was the power of yet, right? Maybe I, I can't get into that no, school, that's a, that's maybe not yet. Exactly. That's awesome. That is so cool. Is this something that you dreamt up, Mark, or you guys dreamt up together, like collaborating, or how did this We about? as a staff, uh, this, this uh, I, I proposed some initial conceptual pieces but this this was the result of a a, a staff retreat where uh, uh where our entire staff got together and talked about these things and we have immense mental health supports here we have uh, uh more than a dozen full-time counselors on our staff for 800 right. kids which a lot of schools don't have but right. it's important to us yeah and uh it was our academic folks and our mental health folks, our social workers, our military staff, our support staff, our special education staff, uh, who who collaborated on on those three elements of the mantra. I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. That's incredible, and it just goes to show the power of teamwork, right? And all all of the various uh, talented individuals that you have, and all of those brilliant minds together to really condense it into those those three really critical components. And that's that's awesome. 
and and I it's, guess it is, a re, it is a reflection on a really incredible staff. I mean, the, yeah. the, I, I a lot of school leaders would say, "Oh, I've got an amazing staff," and and but here it is absolutely true that the people who work here um, have such heart and such a mindset of. We, we, we're going to help every child be as successful as they can be. And we work with, we are an alternative school. Uh, uh, we, we, we serve students who are otherwise generally not successful in other public school or private school settings. Uh, a lot of parents opt for a school like this because they say, oh, well, the military school is going to fix my kid. But ultimately, the people who choose to work here choose to work here because they, they truly do want to help every child overcome all of those challenges and recognize that, that their job as an adult is to be that nurturer, to be that transformer, to be that person that, that, that truly embraces the power of yet, that truly believes in every child having uh, you know what I you know I, I I'm famous around infamous around here for for giving you know 300 second chances you <laughs> know I, I think that that's that's yeah. what it's a big part of what 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 the world needs is 300 second chance absolutely now oh, that's that's beautiful that's an, and, I, and I feel it actually I, I I'm really blessed to to meet a, um, a lot of superintendents like yourself and hear all the different stories and the different uh, different things they're doing for their students, and it's it's always cool to hear uh, um, a slightly different take on it. Like what you're saying is, you know, every every superintendent will say how uh, appreciative they are of their staff, and 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 they're all amazing. But it's it's always fun and interesting for myself and for our listeners to hear the slightly different takes on it and and different approaches. Um, so I, I love it. Nurture stars to stars. And in, uh, embracing the power of yet. That's so cool. I love that. And is there, I guess, any um, advice you'd have for any other superintendents that are listening or final thoughts, uh, anything that you'd like to share that's on your heart that maybe, you know, I, I forgot to ask? Anybody that's been involved in this business for any length of time knows that it it's hard. Uh, and it can be very disheartening. It would be it would be disingenuous for me to say that there are not days that I go home and I and I I'm very sad, I'm frustrated, I'm feeling defeated. Um, and you know, ultimately uh, it, it, it really is about being able to to have a support, your own support system of colleagues and friends, uh, graduates who, who who can who can lift you up and say, Okay, yeah, you're right. It's we've had a, a tough a tough go here, but mm -hmm. um, there are there are lots of good things going on, and you are making a difference. And ultimately, uh, we have to persevere. And uh, you know, I say that out loud, and yet there are many days that I feel like giving up. And, uh, you know, I haven't yet in my career, and I hope that I that I don't, uh, people sort of jokingly say, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll die on campus someday, <laughs> hopefully in, you know, 30, 40 years, but, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that, that um, we have to recognize that this is very, very hard work. People who, who work in other professions really do not understand what we do and and how hard it is so often people say oh you know those school people they they get two two months off in the summer and they they only have to work from eight to three and right. and uh, you know they got all those holidays and you know <laughs> those of us in the trenches know that nothing could be further from the truth and yeah. you know i think that you know this notion of perseverance and grit and resilience yes we're trying to do that for our kids and for our families but we also have to do it for for ourselves and we have to have those skill sets ourselves and we have to sometimes when we struggle we have to be willing to seek counseling seek support seek advice seek that that encouragement from 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 peers and and you know things like your your podcast are a way to to hear other people's perspectives on 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 that notion of trying to be resilient and exhibit grit in in what you're doing as a school leader because 
it is very, very hard work. And, you know, anybody, you know, we're, we're having this conversation on the 14th of December. And I will tell you, I mean, anybody that's led a school knows this is a time that a lot of craziness happens on school campuses. Kids mm -hmm. are, you know, dealing with all kinds of issues and a lot of behavior issues come, come out in, 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 these, in this final week before we go to winter break. Mm -hmm. And it can be disheartening. And we have to recognize that reality and still try to be, uh, to be uh, as resilient as we can be and recognize that when we get down on ourselves or down on what we're doing, we have to seek the support of others and the encouragement of others. And um, I try to, to keep a, a, a shoebox of positive notes that kids have written me over the years mm. and alumni that have written me over the years because Sometimes when I'm feeling really down, I just, you know, pick that up and read through some of those and then feel, feel like, yeah, I can, I can turn the corner and, and overcome the, 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 the current challenge. I love that, Mark. That's so cool that you shared all that because I'm sure there's a lot of superintendents that can relate to everything you said. There's a lot of assistant soups, directors of curriculum and learning. There's probably principals, there's teachers, parents students that can totally relate to everything you said, where it, it, sometimes it feels uh, overwhelming or that it's so hard and we're pushing and pushing and have to be the strength for whoever is looking up to us. And sometimes we need support too, right? Sometimes superintendents need support and that's okay to to seek that. Like you said, it's important to seek that encouragement, that that support, that self-care, because you guys are taking care of the whole district. All those people are looking up to you and we're all human and we all need support. We all need encouragement. We all need each other. And so I, I love that you made that point that sometimes people will look up to superintendents and, and look at, at them as either Superman or Wonder Woman, but we're all people and we all need support. So I, I love that you mentioned that because sometimes as a, when I was a kid and I needed help, I felt shame and a lot of kids do, but I think uh, some adults and myself included feel that shame as well. Like I shouldn't need to ask for encouragement. I shouldn't need to, you know, just toughen up. And sometimes it's absolutely okay to just say, Hey man, I, I've been working so hard. I think I've burnt candles, my candle at both ends. I need some encouragement. Can you, can you help me out? That's totally, I'm so glad you mentioned that Mark. And well, I think the other part that was so cool, the self-care, um, but just making, actually, you know what? That was it. I don't even know where my brain went. I think it was lack of coffee this morning, but that was awesome, Mark. Thank you for sharing that because that's so important for superintendents to take care of themselves too. And um, obviously you're not going anywhere, you know, because you've been there 10 years. And I think those people that joke and say, you're going to die on campus, you know, probably in 40 years, that's true. Cause you're, you're there and that's, you're a testament to that resiliency. And, and maybe part of it is at times when it feels overwhelming or like to use the word that you said, disheartening, you know, maybe that's getting the, the support of your colleagues and friends. And and I, I, is it safe to say that that has at times helped through the past ten years? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I have a, a. There are three very insightful women who helped found this school, and uh, the four of us get together. Uh, they, they they affectionately call it the Fab Four, uh, and and the four of us will get together sometimes at least once a year. And, and do some reflection and, and try to figure out how to overcome some of the emotional, psychological uh, uh, challenges and traumas that yeah. we experience as adults and, yes. and support each other and realize that you know, we're, we're, it's going to be okay. And, and, you know, that, that old phrase, egg bock, you know, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, 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 it doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean it's going to, to happen uh, overnight. It doesn't mean that, that, that there aren't going to be continued struggles, but it's that, you know, reach, having that support system, everybody needs a support system. Uh, the kids need it. Adults need it. Every human being needs it. Absolutely. Amen to that. Amen to that, Mark. And, uh, and now I remember the other part that I thought was so cool that you save the notes. 
right, from students, uh, those encouraging notes, that I do the same thing because there are days for me that I feel like, what am I doing? Is this, am I even making a difference at all? Am I making a dent at all? And then I read those notes from the superintendents or the principals or the students. And, and I, I should get a shoebox. That's actually a better idea. I just have them saved up on my desktop and I'll click them and I'll go, okay, whew, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. <laughs> so that's a great tip for, for anyone out there that's listening. If they're ever feeling disheartened, maybe, maybe do what Mark's doing and, and, and save up those, um, you know, notes of appreciation for you. Uh, and if you're struggling, ask some of your friends, maybe create your own fab four, like what Mark has done with his friends to encourage and lift each other up. And, and, and the coolest part, I think Mark is that you're really authentic, man. And that, that really comes through. And I'm sure that's why parents love sending their kids to you because you've been through it, you've lived it and you've gotten through it and you're instilling all this hope in your kids. And you're showing them as a leader, hey, I've been through it and and it stinks, but got through it and you can too. And especially embracing that yet, right? The 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 nurturing each kid is their your own, turning their scars into stars and helping them embrace the power of yet. That's just that's brilliant. Really love it. And Mark, thanks so much for being with us, man. Again, I, I just would I would be I would be remiss if I didn't just point out again that that didn't that wasn't Mark sitting down in a vacuum and doing that. That really was a very collaborative effort, and it's a it's a sign of of the amazing staff that that work here and how much they care because uh, a lot of of thought went into that mantra, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it 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 uh, it's a reflection on how competent and caring the staff here are. Pete, and that's another thing that, that I already, we were just getting to know each other. And I love that about you too. You're so humble and you're making sure like, Hey, it's not just me. It's the whole team. And that's, that's really beautiful too. That's to me, that's true leadership when, when it's, um, you know, you're sharing, sharing the uh, success and, and another, I think it was a principal the other day was saying, Hey, if we're going to succeed, let's succeed together. If we're going to fail, let's fail together. Let's do this all together. And I'm getting that it's the same feel from you, Mark. It's that you and your team dreamt it up. It's not just one person, it's everyone together. And, and uh, I just love that your authenticity, your warmth, uh, what you've gone through and persevered through, and you're sharing that and, and using that as your fuel to truly, truly help transform kids is, is beautiful. It's awesome. And, and I appreciate you. And I know our, our viewers are going to love this too. So thanks for being with us, Mark. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.